am I going to get a free ticket to World Finals? We'll find out who he faces in a couple of minutes here. All right, we'll say goodbye to Rich for just a moment. He'll be back for our grand finals. ACU and I have a fun battle in Germany here. The two SK members, as you can see, SK Gaming on both sides here of the screen. Morton been with them for just a little bit longer than Faust, though. That's right. Faust going to get a very nice interaction going, getting yeah. the King Tower activated, plus the perfect log timing. And then on the other end, Morton just kind of responding the same way. Great Spear Goblin's going to activate the King Tower himself. Yeah, like to see that out of Faust already, right? Clean, clean gameplay. A uh, little surprised at the bomb tower placement there from Morton. Maybe would have thought he went like a couple tiles over to the left so that the Firecracker isn't able to splash on tower. And I think he's probably feeling the same thing. I don't know if that was a bit of a gut reaction placement from him, but probably not happy about going down 600-ish HP this early on. Yeah, but then the thing with the Firecracker is that it gets 800 damage when it's the Evolution Firecracker. Yeah. So it, I, he can come back very, very easily. Mighty Miners from both players, 140 left and a slight lead advantage for Faust. Faust just going to be running the Firecracker NATO wow. version. And wow, look at that damage already. I mean, it, it's for Faust, but, uh, but we're seeing the Firecracker get put to work. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, and then Morton plays his Firecracker into the splash there, and kind of all things going wrong for Morton, who needs to readjust as Faust gets another great Firecracker on the board, cleans Morton's up, gets some more splash damage, has a perfectly timed log, and this speaks so much more to Faust's mental fortitude than it does anything else. Yes, Morton isn't doing the best interaction-wise, but Faust just kind of got not bodied, but beaten in a very, very important upper bracket finals. And here he is back against one of the best in the world, making very clean plays. Evo to Firecracker coming out from Morton. Gonna go walk down the left of the lane. And now, okay, so NATO used from Faust and he's just gonna take the Firecracker off the board. That's exactly what you need to do. You, If you have the opportunity, it doesn't matter how much elixir you're spending, you need that Firecracker off the board. And I do love that, you know, in the past when we had matchups like this AC, if you were down 600 HP in the in the opening moments, it was already over. So I do I do love and agree with you that with the Evo Firecracker being a factor now, that that is never the case in this game. As we saw with Igor earlier, you're never too safe. <laughs> 14 seconds left. I mean, both players are just kind of repeating the same plays over and over. And right there, getting pretty aggressive, almost knocking it outside of the range, but not just quite. Firecracker not able to take out the opposing Firecracker. Offensive wow. NATO used. And Morton in a world of hurt. Tower down to 435. And Faust, he's just cycling so, so quickly. Morton has no response. And it's really just skeletons for Spear Goblins. And the skeletons allow him to cycle so much quicker. And also, Faust is like scary, angry playing right now. Honestly, he's he's playing so aggressive. Mighty Miner on that right-hand tower, sizzling away. Morton trying to make a case for himself, but Faust has been so aggro. It's been incredible. Morton has just been on his heels the entire game. Yeah, I, I don't even know how it even happened. He just, he got the offensive pressure early on and he's been able to hold it. Morton is not getting pushes. We, we, we take a look at Faust then, and he has Mighty Miner, Evo Firecracker, Goblins on top of the tower. Morton just never has any kind of offensive presence. Yeah, and that was just an exceptional showing there from Faust. The Spear Goblins making that a little bit longer to get back around, and it felt like because of that in and of itself, Morton had a really difficult time tracking Elixir and tracking Cycle for that entire game. I mean, setting up bomb towers in front for Firecrackers to line up, and then immediately on the other side of the board, there's an Evoed Firecracker on your tower, and then the pressure was just nonstop from there on out. So. Let's see if Morton can kind of reset and readjust back up against the wall. This is an elimination game in our lower bracket final. Winner goes on to our grand finals. We'll be in the competition for our golden ticket. So a huge, huge game number two here. Game number two, Faust gonna be running RG. Morton looking like it's probably gonna be graveyard once again from one of our competitors. It, I, I mean, oh. a lot of these players, do you believe that, but now with the introduction of the Skeleton Dragon, still could be Mortar, still could be Graveyard, still a lot of opportunities for some different decks. Yeah, definitely a lot of options here, and 
Morton has the highest win rate with RG and Firecracker of all of our competitors in this monthly final, opting to maybe not play either of them here in game number two. Inferno Tower is going to put in a lot of work against the RG. That's the card that Morton needs to play perfectly every single time. So Faust is going to have to come up with an answer to that without the Lightning. Just going to be running the Fireball in this deck. 26-19, 28-59. And both these guys slow playing a bit here. Skeleton King gonna take his time. Skeleton Dragons on the... I don't know how much value they're gonna get throughout this game because we're always gonna see a fireball and then the DPS from the Skeleton Dragons aren't even that great. So it's really gonna depend. I mean, for Morton, I, I don't know. The Skeleton Dragons aren't gonna get that much value, but I think the Archers are gonna be one of those cards that we'll, we'll just see throughout the game. Yeah, archers and goblins have kind of started to get a little bit more value because people are starting to play fireball just more because, yeah, arrows are great against a regular firecracker, but you need to deal with the evoed firecracker. So those cards like the goblins, archers, and guards that were basically preyed upon when the archers got buffed and the goblins got buffed have now been able to kind of crawl back into the meta. A huge push incoming for Morton. Going to have archers at the bridge. Needs to take care of the goblins before they put in too much work. And this is actually good. Is oh, good. I thought the fish. Yeah, I thought the fisherman was going to pull, but not entirely. Barbarrel going to clean up most of it, but Morton with a great push going down the field gets the tower all the way down to 1992 and flips it so that he has the advantage. And I was in the same boat as you. I thought that we were going to see the Skeleton King pulled first, and then that would have been a much more threatening push. A little bit of fortuitous decision making there by the fish boy there for Faust to pick up that first archer, lower that DPS, and now a, uh, a lot of red coming down that right-hand lane. We need some DPS on top of that RG, and we need it right now for Morton. And that's wow, Sizzle from the Inferno. Wow. Yeah, Skeleton Dragons clean up everything else, but that was a great defense from Morton. And I was actually in the process of saying, hey, I'm not actually sure about this defense because he cycles the barbs in the back and they're really not going to get any value. So I, I, I wonder if we're going to stop seeing him do that, especially when it's not the Evo barbs. I, I think you can cycle Evo barbs in the back, but when they're regular versions, I don't think cycling it in the back is the right play. And this Phoenix just keeps getting an insane amount of value on exactly what you're talking about. You know, we see Skeleton Dragons over the middle, Fireball there, easy pull for Faust. And then, yeah, the, the it's like a weird five elixir cycle right now for those barbs. Like it's a five elixir cycle card that isn't doing a whole lot for Morton. <laughs> Both towers for Faust down to 1900 HP. And really, even though I don't totally love the defensive pressure from the Barbs, the offensive pressure where they're going down the left lane is scary. But oh. now this is a massive push. Lumberjack on top of the tower. Wow, another errant Lumberjack getting away here and now making trouble for our competitor. RG pushes the other RG. Evoed RG pushes regular RG. Regular RG gets a shot on tower. Evoed RG gets a shot on the Inferno. 1403, 1863. Skelly Dragons across the bridge, taken for a GY. Freeze should come in. There it is. Yeah, getting the tower down to 1666 with the help of the arrows. One skeleton king or one skeleton dragon locking onto the tower and getting it all the way down to 1072 with 12 seconds left. That's huge. Late inferno down. Fishboy still pulls it. Should be able to get back to a freeze. Fireball high, not low. Doesn't need the freeze. Morton pushes this to game number three. Does need the freeze. Got him. <laughs> and Fowl is doing everything that he possibly can. And this. This is the matchup you're actually looking for when you're running these Graveyard Freeze decks. We're, we don't, I mean, really, the, the commentators get to say, oh, we don't like this deck because you're not getting matched up against RG. When you actually get the matchup, this is the deck you want to be using. And, you know, Morton never really playing this deck before. Gosh, I love our producers. I'm giving you guys a shout out right now. Uh, Morton never played that deck before, but AC literally to finish your sentence gets the matchup that he wants. Beautiful stuff, 0% win rate with Graveyard Freeze up until that moment. Morton doing what he does, making history, maybe a little bit of small history, but still. 
Game three winner moves on into the championship round. But again, we've talked about it all day, all day yesterday as well. The points are absolutely massive every single game. I mean, we can look into the future in two months. We could say that the winner of this moves on to the world final. So a lot of pressure on both of these competitors. We'll see if Faust's Inferno Dragon gameplay can rival that of his opponents, Arden Toas, in their previous set as Zap comes down to deal with those bats. But now Wallbreaker's in. AQ protected, which is really, really nice. And, you know, Archer Queen starting to see a little bit of a revival, especially in dual mode. Once you see what cards have already been played, what Evos are still available. And then, of course, you know, trying to take advantage of that in terms of spells. And right there, I was a little bit afraid that Morton was going to go the ultra quick cycle minor deck, but instead he's going to be running. I This wow. is an incredible deck choice for Morton because of who he is going against. This is incredible uh, dexmanship. Oh, yes. Use it yes, it's still Morton. alive six years later. <laughs> AC, did you see both of the little smirks on their face when Morton played that Tesla? It was amazing. Morton plays the Tesla and he goes, he got a little smirk going, I bet you didn't expect that, right? Who is playing Tesla right now? Who's playing Lava right now? Well, you're playing Lava right now. And then Faust, conversely, he gets a little bit of smile going, all right, man, this is why you're the GOAT. This is why you're one of the best ever, right? Like, you knew in game two I was going to run RG, and in game three I'm going to go to the skies, and you were ready for it. Well, that's you AQ to... Poison Snowball Tesla. Sorry. I mean, it, it really comes down to look at the first two letters of both of these players' names SK versus SK. These guys practice against each other, they know what they want to do. And Morton utilizing that significantly better than his opponent. He knows that his opponent wants to go into these loon type decks in that game three. Beautiful defense there from Morton. Second Tesla down and Rich letting us know in the chat that this is the deciding game between who will be the points leader on the leaderboard. So just to add a little bit of cherry on top or insult to injury, depending on where you're at. And it's looking like it is going to be Morton right now. I mean, this is a Lava Hound deck with Loon. Anything can happen, but Morton has all the tools in his arsenal to stop it. Yeah, it's okay. So Faust still deciding to go in with the Lava Hound. That means Morton can apply pressure, go Goblins at the bridge. I mean, it's really just if he goes Lava, he goes Goblins, bridge, bats low. That's all you have to do on Morton's end. Instead, electing go, to go in with the Tesla. A lot coming down, but we're going to see a poison and a snowball, yeah, and it's going to be cleaned up. Yeah, that is easy money right there. Faust has played Lava Hound more than any other competitor in this entire competition. Morton just calling his number in game. Game two and in game three, nice high poison here. Morton trying to hold the line, but 857 to 446. We're talking one balloon drop here can turn everything around. Morton needs to end this game and he needs to end it now. Inferno stays alive. Wallbreaker does bait out the arrows. It forces out the arrows, but here's the thing. He might not have needed that. And I think you really have to focus on min maxing in these. Yeah. I mean, in these moments. So I, I really want to see a replay and just, I mean, just figure out, could he have avoided using the arrows in that scenario? Yeah, that's a really good call there, AC. You're absolutely right on min-maxing in terms of like what you need to do to win this game right now. Morton going to the back again, again, again. Now just needs to get the poison down. And Morton is going to our grand finals against Arden Toas. Gets the reverse sweep, turns things around. Back to back there for the guy that's been at every world final since its inception. Morton does the walk-off 